Welcome everybody. This is Sister Techi, of course. Our viewers, first time guests, our uh, families and friends on FB and YouTube followers. Thank you for coming and joining us again in our Grow series. This is the last part of the Grow series that we have, um, I think for seven weeks, we have been uh, dealing about golf. And tonight we will have another one, which is Toro Ness. And I'd like to also greet our chapters here in the zone, Visayas and Mindanao. Hello to all of you. And to those that are, have been invited, I'd like to say hello to all of you. At marami marami po salamat. And of course, let God bless you for your um, heart's delight to listen to the words of God. I'd like also to welcome our chapters abroad from the USA, Canada, of course, UK. We have four chapters there. Spain, two, and UAE, four, and of course, Hong Kong, six, and Africa, Uganda. And there are also members listening and watching from Paris, hello, Japan, Australia, and Germany. So to all of you, let us start again with a short prayer in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Father God in heaven, in your Son's name, as we invoke your name, we would like to ask you to be with all our viewers right now, wherever they are, and extend your hands that are not too short to each one of them, representing families and representing their loved ones. I ask you to touch them and fill them with your Holy Spirit as I will deliver your message be with them and speak to them and all the things that we're going to do let it be for your honor and glory in christ together we pray amen in the name of the father the son of the holy spirit amen okay so we are now going to have our last series and this is about thoroughness last time it's about finishing well right so this is still part of finishing well but i'd like to share with you a fresh start. Well, we discussed about anybody can start something and it's another subject altogether to finish something. It's yet another thing to finish well. And we have learned from Paul's steps to finishing the race of life well in 2 Timothy 4. Let me tell you something. The moment that God brings victory into your life, Satan is going to come and he will try and steal that victory. The moment that God fills you, Satan is going to say, no, that wasn't God. But it is up for you to finish strong. You finish strong by following true. And we have learned that Israel had a great miracle, so many miracles in their lives in in fact, every miracle, many miracles, but then they stopped. And Moses had a message for them. Moses said, you follow true by obeying God's commandments. God brought them through the Red Sea for a reason. God led them with a pillar of fire for a reason. But they were to possess the land. But what happened? They didn't finish. Six weeks later, we find them turning their backs on Moses and on God. An entire generation of Israel never claimed their promise because they did not finish. So starting things is easy to do. We start projects, we start routines. We start new disciplines. Everyone does it. But finishing things is an altogether different subject. So my question again, how many have done projects are floating around your place? Last week, Sana, you have already done something, right? Okay. Have you ever come close to the end of a project and did less 
than your best just to be able to call it finish yung bang haphazardly done huwag pong ganun there is a job for you to do a reason for your existence if you're going to finish well we need to keep our focus number two fight the good fight of faith fighting the good fight is in second timothy 4 verse 7 i have fought the good fight of faith says paul number three you finish strong by obeying god's word you will receive all of god's power if you continue in god's word and number four of course give the faith there's so many times when Satan will come and whisper lies to us that we will believe. Like, for example, quit being um, from serving. You are not paid in the community. Why should you? Why should you be honest in the workplace when nobody else is and are getting all the promotions and raises? Why shouldn't you join in and enjoy the prosperity of the wicked it doesn't seem to be hindering them why should you continue the denial of self for the sake of christ look out for number one ito po ang mga temptations hindi po ba? So do you remember now we begin our teaching on thoroughness and please watch this video Thoroughness. Thoroughness means carried through to completion, careful about detail, complete in all respects. That's convicting. Few indeed are the people who finish what they start and do a complete job of it. I'm talking about the rare but beautiful experience of carrying out a responsibility to its completion. I'll name a few. A project at home. Mapping out a plan, then tackling the task with abandoned energy, dedicated to the goal of doing the job right. In occupation, the fine art of working is a lost art today really getting in there and studying the job, reading and expanding your knowledge, becoming an expert in your field for the simple delight of accomplishment. Everyday duties. Is there the telltale sign, unfinished, written across your housework, ladies? Is your trademark manana or the cliche, someday I'll have to get that done? The sluggard longingly craves, but because he's allergic to work, he gets nothing in return. Proverbs 20 verse 4 makes this clear. So what are you waiting for? Does it need painting? Paint it and do a thorough job. Does it need cleaning? Clean it thoroughly. Does it need ironing? Iron it wrinkle-free with gusto. Does it need attention? Give it thorough unrestrained attention. Stop being satisfied with a half-hearted incomplete job. Stun those around you with a thorough, finished product. And stop putting it off. There you are. So, let's start. Thoroughness. What do you think is easier? Starting a job or finishing a job? Although there are challenges to just getting started, I believe the greater challenge is in following through and making sure 
the job gets finished. Ang tanong ko, ano ang pinagagawa sa iyo ng Diyos ngayon? Anong ginagawa mo sa works, sa, for, sa office? Ano as students ang mga assignments sa pinagagawa sa iyo? Na hanggang ngayon talaga, you have not yet finished. Or you're still doing it. Nagkakaraming ka kung kailan yung deadline, hindi ka patapos. And that is not thoroughness. So when it comes to fulfilling our mission as a community of changing the spiritual landscape of our community, or when it comes to following the ways, God is calling us to change the status quo of our lives. It is always easier to get started than to finish the job. Do I hear amen? But that's nothing new. Let us learn about how Nehemiah was called by God to do what seemed almost impossible and rebuild the world of Jerusalem, which had been laying in rubble for over 100 years. Okay, we will now focus on one of the um, prophets of God, and I, I really loved Nehemiah. Parang talagang uh, nakakahawig din yung mga nangyayari sa isang leader sa buhay niya. Well, today, perhaps like me, you were first attracted to the idea of becoming a disciple of Jesus because you thought that was the road was just an easier life. For others, perhaps, you were enticed by your friends with the idea that becoming a Christian was your ticket to financial prosperity or to a blessed life. And there, of course, there is certainly no shortage of people teaching that idea in our culture today, Lipoba. But some of you were promised also, perhaps by some well-meaning person, who really did have your best interests at heart. That if you committed your life to Jesus, all your problems would go away. But if you've been a follower of Jesus for many time at all, or any time at all, I am pretty sure that you've learned that our life as a follower of Jesus is not always easy. Do I hear amen? And that is certainly what Nehemiah discovered when he embarked on his endeavor to lead the people of Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. Tatandaan nyo, ang walls ay napaka-importante because when there is a breach, then makakapasok ang kaaway. And for us, even in our personal lives, if there are breaches or merong butas or opening for Satan to attack us, I'm telling you, 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 you better watch because breaches are some ways wherein the enemy can enter. That's why um, he wept when he heard about the broken wall of Jerusalem. So when he heard this, he prayed he planned, he handled opposition from without and conflict from within. Without, sa labas, and within. But more than anything, Nehemiah was successful. Why? Because he finished well. So, sino po ang gustong natatapos niya kung ano man ang pinagagawa ng Diyos sa kanya? Taas ang kamay. Ayan. Okay, pakisabi de andin, I wish I will be able to finish every assignment given to me. Minsan, tambak-tambak na ang pinagagawa ng Diyos, pero wala ni isa ka mang natatapos. Ang daming dahilan, bakit? Mga kapatid. So, tingnan natin. One, God gave him great favor. God is always giving favor to all his children but then kailangan din we are obedient to him di ba 
we are favor-minded because we're children of God, but then sometimes, instead of acting, living like one, we're living, not, you know, not as a child of God. If you have read the story of Nehemiah, we have learned how God gave Nehemiah favor with the king of Persia to go and do work and how. Because he prayed and waited for the right time. And God gave him success in organizing the people for the hard work. So, pinakita sa kanya ng Lord yung vision. At ang vision niya, instead of rubbles, ang vision niya was a finished wall. Yung po ang vision niya. Okay, nakita na niya na hindi mga rubbles, but ang nakita niya, the wall was already finished. So number two, doing God's work invites ridicule and persecution. Sulat nyo yan. Say amen. Hindi ba? How many of you, when you have started doing God's work, ang dami rin mga pagsubok at persecutions. Tama o hindi? Lagay nyo. Ayan. At marami rin Dahilan, and this is also the reason why we're not finishing well because we are affected by these persecutions or quitting. We quit because of all trials and tribulations that we face. So let us learn from Nehemiah's example. We've learned also that doing the work invited ridicule and opposition from others and even made the people get tired, weary, and afraid. If it has happened to Jesus, then it will also happen to us. But Jesus says to learn from all the example that he gave us. And so, lahat tayo, mga kapatid, alam ko, we're getting tired, sometimes weary, and many times afraid of what's happening to us. But through it all, Nehemiah reminded the people to keep their focus on God. And he instructed them to remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight. So as leader, as a leader, Nehemiah encouraged the whole community to go on, not to get tired, not to quit, but to continue. Nehemiah continues to wade through the obstacles his enemies place in his path. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya, pero hindi lang isang beses. If you will read the book of Nehemiah, I think six times attempts, no? Uh, his enemies, Sambalat and Tobiah, they started, you know, plotting so many um, uh, plots against him para hindi niya matuloy ang pinagagawa ng Diyos. And, and how he managed to do what seems so difficult for us. So how do we manage? Kasi dito maliwanag that when God is asking us to do something, we need the virtue of thoroughness. You know, when a, when a person is, uh, a person has this virtue, Pag nagumpisa siya talaga, dedicated niya yung time niya, dedicated niya yung heart niya because he knows that this is God's work and he wants to finish it well. And that should be the virtue and the character of each one of us doing the job well. So let's see how he finishes the job. Ito po ang kulang natin. But this is very important, yung persistence. Let us become persistent. He persisted despite all these obstacles. And dami obstacles if you will read the, the book of Jeremiah. And the further we get into the book of Nehemiah, the more I am convinced the reason he was able to do that is that, number two, know that you are in a spiritual battle, brothers and sisters. Yung mga nangyayari sa atin. Dapat by this time, you know that every time you're bringing souls for Christ, every time you're working for God, 
all those that have decided to follow Jesus, those that are little by little conforming to the image of Jesus. When God is using you, using your family, I'm going to tell you, and you know that there is always a struggle. There is always like um, a, a struggle, like being rest, 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 there's wrestling, okay? So, um, he understand that the struggle that he faced was not just a physical struggle. It was primarily a spiritual one. So, alam ni Nehemiah that the, the struggle that he has within and the struggle from without is always caused by the enemy. The enemy of the flesh and the enemy of which is spiritual, the devil. The Apostle Paul warned us that we also face that same kind of spiritual battle. Kaya nga, he wrote letters to the Ephesians, for example, to the Corinthians. He wrote letters to the Philippians. He wrote letters to the Thessalonians. And let us read his letter to the Ephesians. At Ephesus, he said, For we do not wrestle, wrestle against flesh and blood. We are not against the rulers, but against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Ephesians 6.12 so in other words, brothers and sisters, I, you don't want to see, you know, the, the, the sports, which is wrestling. I don't want it. Ganon katindi kung paano tayo ginigiba. Ganon yung kalaban natin. Ganon ang ginagawa sa atin. If we will, uh, we will let him. And we have to know this. There are three enemies. The flesh, yung ating old nature that has not been surrendered totally to God. The world, 1 John 2 verse 15. And of course, the spiritual forces, Satan. So number three, know the schemes of Satan. Alamin natin kung ano mga paraan ng panilinlang ni Satan. That's why we read the letter of St. Paul, the second letter of St. Paul, to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. In other words, wag tayo maging ignorante sa mga paraan na ginagawa ni Satanas sa atin. Ang dami po niyang mga schemes na pwedeng gawin. Marami rin po siyang mga bagay to entice our eyes, to, to lure us, no? to sin, those temptations. Marami po siyang pwede ipakita sa atin na nakatatakam, okay? nakaka-allure, no? nakaka-attract, nakaka-distract. And we have to know this in finishing well. Sometimes may pinagagawa sa atin, ayan na, ang dami na. Minsan personal, nandiyan yung may, may, may biglang magyayaya sa'yo, party dito, o kaya bakasyon, eto, eto na yung pinagagawa sa iyo ng Lord, hindi mo magawa. Even at work, hindi ba? Sometimes we are so distracted with so many things na nakakalimutan nating gawin. There are many times we have forgotten what God wants us to do. Okay? There are times that God is disciplining us and we always want to pray. And then when you are beginning to pray, you promise to pray even an hour with him, when you start praying, hindi po ba? Satan is there. And then, um, he, he tells you to be lazy. He tells you to procrastinate, mamaya na lang. Or, he will ask, you know, some, some persons, na madistract ka, patatawagan ka, may darating, ang dami pong pakulo ni Satan. And we, all of us Christians, we must open our eyes and discern the way Satan is doing this. Huwag tayo maging biktima, alamin natin. Alamin natin ang ating mga kalaban. Kilalanin natin ang ating kalaban. Let us 
always uh, see and and know our enemies of the flesh. For example, when you want to gratify yourself, when you have, you know, you want to be entitled to be very proud, you no, know, and uh, and also to be stubborn, to neglect God's work, to neglect your duties, and also the world and dami, no schedules, no, and then mga ah, mga friends, your peers, no, your friends, your barcadas, they would ask you to go there and join. I am not saying these are wrong. These things are what well, this is for fun to enjoy. But then again, don't let what God wants to do to be set aside. Amen. And these same invisible enemies that confront us daily in our walk with Jesus were also present in the book of Nehemiah nearly 2,500 years ago. So, as we studied the book of Nehemiah, we are given a glimpse into the tactics that these powerful forces employ in their effort to work that God has given us to do. And even more importantly, we see how we can respond effectively to those attacks so that, like Nehemiah, we might finish well. Nailangan alam natin paano natin naharapin ang mga ganito sitwasyon sa buhay natin. How we can resist the devil so he will flee. Amen? We'll see this evening how Satan uses five main tactics in that battle. O sulat na ninyo. Okay, the purpose of both tactics is to, number one, distract us. Dami natin distractions, ano? Diba? Even in the church, diba? O, oh, nagsisiba ka, tapos mamaya may dadaang magandang babae, na-distract ka na. Eh, minsan naman kasi, no? May mga, oh, maganda nga legs mo, maganda, sexy ka. But probably, let us also consider that we might be, you know, the center of attraction or distraction doon sa mga nagsisimba because andun yung suot mo plang plunging neckline, ang iksi-ikse, talaga naman, no, nakaka-attract, no? Distraction, minsan, merong, you know, we bring our children, no, to, the, to church, no? Pero okay naman yun, di ba? Kaya lang sometimes, eh, yung anak mo, doon mo pa nilalaro, di ba? Ang dami natin nakikita niya, di ba? So, yung bata, na, nakatalikod, yung nanay, karga-karga, ang nakaharap, yung mga tao, na didistract sila, di ba? So, maraming distraction. Sometimes, you are there already in the church, but then, how, how is your mind? Is it not, um, your mind is traveling? Hindi natin natatapos yung mass because nakatulog sa tayo. It also happens to me when I'm so tired. No, in the morning, maaga ako gigising. And then there are times talaga na during mass, biglang pipikit lang ako to meditate. Pamaya, wow! Naku, nagulat ako. Nakatulog ako. See? So that is why so many times let us always remember there are distractions and that will distract us from doing what we need to do to persevere in our journey to become mature disciple of Jesus. Number two, fear. Fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. And Satan knows that if he can get us to take our eyes off of God, he can cause us to be hindered in our spiritual walk by our fear. That is why Peter compared Satan to a roaring lion who is seeking to devour us. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone whom he can devour. There are many things I would like to share with you, my personal encounter. There are so many things God wants to do for our community. We have a lot of projects that God would introduce to us. And uh, we have the SYFOF right now. 
the singles are Youth Faith on Fire, no S Y F O F, which was a vision given to me ten years ago in Vatican in one of the churches wherein I prayed. And the Lord gave me a message. It's time that I would see empty seats. The Lord said, ignite the fire among the youth. So, um, in doing this, then there will be so many distractions, especially when assignments are given to the young people, assignments are given to the members of the community. Misa na delay yung video, misa delay yung mga schedules, misa delay yung practices, and damning distractions. And what happens, brothers and sisters, we do not finish well. And I, I really, I really get irritated, especially when we don't meet deadlines in God's work. I always emphasize that in order that we, uh, we work, we work ahead of time, and then 30 days before, dapat tapos na. But unfortunately, dahil nga sa dami ng distractions, no, sa mga tao, sa mga workers, sa mga leaders, sa mga members, then what's, uh, what, what happened? The project suffers. No? So maraming distractions. Number two, may pinagagawa si Lord. Napaka, napaka bigat din dahil, you know, it's not just an ordinary work that the Lord wants. He wants to ignite the fire among the youth. Among the youth. Sa youth lamang ba ng Lord's plak yan? Or the youth of today? So, uh, for 10 years, the Lord has been, you know, showing us, no, that He wants the, the, the Pentecost experiences to be experienced by the young people. And the Lord, you know, sometimes His work it's not easy. Works of God are things that are impossible to do. Because if it's just ordinary work, then, well, anybody can do it. But remember, every time God would reveal something, the tendency, you know, is to be afraid. Pero alam niyo, mga kapatid, um, if you have known God, if you have been, um, yeah, if you have seen how He worked, fear Banguish, you know, fear uh, should be banguish because fear is not from God. At siempre, the antidote of fear is trust. No, fear is the opposite of faith. And Satan knows that if he can get us to take our eyes off God, he can cause us really na ma ma hindered ang mga pinagagawa ng Dios sa atin and even our spiritual walk by. Our fear. That is why, again, watch Satan is just like a roaring lion, ready whom he can devour. Isa din sa pinagawa ng Panginoon is when he would ask me, hey, um, a project in a vision, and then aside sa fear, then deception comes. Number three, if Satan can't get us to fear him, then he will try to deceive us. And no wonder for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And you'll find this in 2 Corinthians 11.14. And another one is 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be fed, be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So, brothers and sisters, Satan in Revelation 20, verse 3, is a deceiver. Manguhuwad, mangloloko. And many times, okay, many times, brothers and sisters, that Satan will try to deceive us, that we can't make it. But I, from my own experiences, when I look at the jobs done by God through us, I could not even, you know, say no 
or be afraid now because I've experienced and seen the beautiful and the, how awesome God is with His promises, how powerful God can empower us also, give us the power to be able to finish the project. And one project that he has given me, of course, is when he said, I want you to build a center for me. It was an answer from my prayers. I was asking the Lord, Lord, we have been renting five spontaneously, five centers. At five centers, naan laki laki ng ami, binabayaran. And I asked the Lord, Lord, bigyan nyo naman kami ng sarili namin uh, center. And God moved. God started to show that He is going to answer the problem or the, the prayer na hinihingi namin. And that is why this evening we will see Nehemiah, when he was doing it, the work of building the wall of Jerusalem, Nehemiah's enemies who are unknowingly being used by Satan to attempt, attempt to thwart or to prevent hadlangan and the work of God, okay? And use those of these tax, these tactics as they attempt to keep Nehemiah and his fellow Jews from finishing the work that, what, that, that is almost complete. Mga kapatid, all of us can be used by God, but all of us also can be used by Satan to stop the work of God. Yung ating pong pagwawala ang bahala, yung ating pong pagdedelay ng trabaho ng Lord, yung ating pong di pagsunod sa Kanya, hindi po ba, sino po ba ang gumagamit sa atin noon? No other than the devil. And do not let him use you by affecting the works of God or the plans of God in your life. No, may magandang gustong gawin ng Diyos sa iyo, pero tinatakot ka ng kalaban. Meron ka sanang opportunity to be promoted, to, uh, to apply in that job, pero tinatakot ka. Dinidistract ka ng kalaban. And then, hindi lamang po yun, Tinatakot ka na, ano, hindi mo kaya yan. Wala kang connection dyan. Hindi ka naman ganun katalino. You know, personally and also in God's work, brothers and sisters, we are also going to be used by God. But again, don't allow Satan to use you. When we disobey, we attempt to thwart or prevent God's work. Amen? In Psalms 55, I'd like you to read this at home. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my pleas. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught because of what my enemy is saying, because the threats of the wicked, for they bring down suffering on me and assail me in their anger. Brothers and sisters, uh, during the times that um, I was persecuted also for obeying what God wants, no? to uh, again organize a new community, which is the Lord's flock. There were so many persecutions that were happening that the Lord allowed us to have. And fear and trembling, trembling have besought me. Terrors of death has fallen me. Alam nyo, um, there was this beautiful passage in Psalms 55. Sabi ni David, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter far from the tempest and the storm. And this was his prayer. Lord, confuse the wicked, confound their words, for I see violence and strife. Day and night, they frowl about on its wall. Destructive forces at our work 
in the in the city. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But if you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God, as we walk about among the worshippers, alam nyo, lalun lalun na ang mga umuusig pa naman sa amin, mga kasamahan namin na napaka-close sa amin noon, mga kapatid, no? Ang sakit doon, di ba? And, but you, you, you see, this was my favorite prayer. I would always pray Psalms 55 na, Lord, the ones that are insulting us are our very own brothers and sisters. And you know, brothers and sisters, maniwala kayo. That prayer is so beautiful that at the end, then I saw, I saw the crown of victory that God has prepared for those that is started and finished as well. Number four, his aim is to distract us, to destroy us. Opposition to the rebuilding. In Nehemiah, when Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews and in the presence of his associates, and the army of Samaria, he said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they have restored their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can you bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Uh, si Sambalat po, at meron pa po siya kasama si Tobaya. Sambalat and Tobaya, you know. Both of them were, you know, persecuting Nehemiah and all the Jews. They were holding back. They were stopping the building of the wall. Okay, so let us go on. Like the heritage, tingnan ninyo. Nung inumpisaan po natin itong heritage, katakot-takot na mga streamers ang nakapaligid dito sa aming lugar. They were trying to stop us from rising on the building, 12-story building. At we were not given any, any um, permit by the barangay because they, the, the neighborhoods refuses to make us start the building. At hindi lamang po yan, mga patid. May mga tao that they were opposing this and they would even say, this is just the dream of Sister Techi. This is not from God. Siya lang ang may gusto nito. So I was attacked, no? But then, my brothers and sisters, they are more on our side than that of Satan. Amen? So what I did was prayer. I sought the Lord in prayer. And I made sure that the whole community also prayed. I, I am not only relying on prayer, but I would always teach the whole community the power of prayer. So, that was the same thing that Nehemiah did to pray. And you will read this in, let us, let us read this. Hear us our God, for we are despised, turn their insults back on their own heads. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So, we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people work with all their hearts. So, look at that. Despite of the many persecutions, marami po mga talagang mga uh, marites na nagbibintang, you know, what we did was to do more concert of prayers, intercessory prayers, and I would always compose prayers and from the scripture, and we would recite this, and we would pray for our enemies because Matthew 5, 44, it tells us that, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Blessed are they that are persecuted because of Christ. Yours is the crown of life. 
and then do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful, do what is right in the eyes of God. So in Romans 12, 14 to 21, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. And do not even repay anyone evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of God. You know, my brothers and sisters, wag kayong gumanti sa kanila. I never, 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 even in my mind, no, to take vengeance on those people that have maligned my name, maligned the name of my family, and cause us a lot of shame sa mga pinagagawa nila. You know, so many times, no, nakaka, nakaka, ano, below the belt, pero, you know, God knows everything. So, wag tayo matatakot. Number two, refuse to allow distractions to derail God's work. Nehemiah has, a, has an example, and he has a, a couple of types of distractions. First, he has this uh, persistent ma messenger from Sabala trying to get him to stop the work and come down and talk with, with them. Then after the ta tactics failed, four times the man, they send the messenger uh, one more time with a trump up story that they threatened to send back to King Artaxerxes about how Nehemiah is plotting to revolt against the king. So, pinagbibintangan siya, mga kapatid, that he will, he's a rebel and he's trying to revolt. But, but then after that, he is told by a supposed man of God that what he should really do is to quit working and go into hiding to save his skin. But through all these distractions, Nehemiah's response is the same. Listen, I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. They sh why should the work stop while I leave it and go down it to you? So, makikita nyo, he is a man of discernment. Okay? Sh tapos sinabi niya, should a man like me run away? Or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. Here we see, again, that his enemies were trying everything possible to distract Nehemiah's attention from the job he was trying to accomplish. And he could have wasted all sorts of time going down and talking with them, trying to convince them, trying, you know, to, to, to answer the questions, no. But he kept quiet. Mga kapatid, I, I would like to share with you also, hindi ko po pinatulan ang mga kung ano-ano mo, po mga uh, persecutions, accusations, calumnies that were thrown to us. Because I relied on God, the truth will always prevail. And nakikita po naman natin na when you are on the side of God, He will always, re remember this, He will always fight for you. Amen? Number three, refuse to be distracted. Refuse to be distracted. Friends, sisters, and brothers, when we are a church, try to get moving and change the status quo, we can be sure that one of the tools Satan will use against us is the power of destruction. Learn to say no. And Nehemiah said no. Number five, remember your commitment to God. It's been called tyranny of the urgent. As soon as you make a commitment to do something for the Lord, remember, make a change in your life and you will be inundated with stuff to do. Suddenly, problems will crop up that seem to need all of your attention and energy. And this is a scheme of the devil. And we must be aware of this fact. Amen? So, nakita natin, pag may pinagawa ang Panginoon doon sa mga alagad niya, nagkaroon ng temptation no, to, to get weary, to be afraid and fear in the middle of the sea, going to the, to the other side of the lake. Ganyan po ang paraan ng Satan. So number six, love God and your neighbor. How do we defeat the devil when he tempts us to leave the work? We're going to take care of distractions. Keep the main thing. The main thing is loving God with all your heart and mind and loving your neighbor as yourself in Matthew 22. Number seven, rely upon the strengthening of the Holy Spirit 
Nehemiah 6, verse 9. Okay? Their hands will get too weak for the work, and it will be not completed. But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. My brothers and sisters, you have seen how the Lord's work that started with nothing, it was just a vision given by the Lord to me. And then I shared this vision to all the members of the Lord's flock. All of us started working continuously and then encouraging the members not to be afraid, but to have faith in God, to trust God, not to be distracted, but continue. And look at this, our construction, nagpo-pour-in ngayon. Ayan, pinakikita natin. And uh, we, we still go on construction even though there was pandemic, we did not stop because this is God's work. We have never been afraid of how much it would cost us. Each time na may pangangailangan, God has always provided. After all, He owns all our silver and gold. As in so many other places, Nehemiah realized that he could not do the work on his own. He went to the Lord in prayer and said, Strengthen my hands, Lord. We've got to make the same realization. We will be powerless to complete the work God wants us to do, to create this authentic Christian community that effectively reaches out to unchurched people without the power of the Lord. Mga kapatid, not by your might, not by your power, but by the Spirit of the Lord, that we can do all things that are impossible. Mga kapatid, itong tahanan ng Diyos, ito pinagagawa sa atin to go out and make disciples. Do not be afraid of man. Start, you know, start using the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Share, share to others, bring people back to God. How will we get the work done by His Spirit? Across our church, across our community, we need people who understand that they are weak, but they are learning into the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish great things. So I pray that the Holy Spirit will blow upon this congregation. All the people that are watching, the people that are there in their respective homes, give us evangelistic fashion, prophetic insight to encourage and inspire us. The anointing of the Spirit to bring wholeness and healing. Wag tayo matakot sa pinagagawa ng Diyos. Maraming pagsubok, pero panalunin mo, just make sure you are in the sight of the Lord and do not be afraid, do not get distracted, do not get derailed, and remove those distractions. For it is not by might, but uh, not our own power. Amen? So, finally, refuse to be derailed. Focus on God. Amen? Focus. There, there were two results when Nehemiah followed. Number one, the work was completed, palakpakan natin, and their enemies started to fear them. Read this. So that the wall was completed on the 25th of Eloi in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid, lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work has been done with the help of our God. Alam niyo mga kapatid, ang dami mga taong pinagtawanan lang kami, marami mga tao umalis pa sa Lord's Park, mga tao gumawa ng bagay para mahinto. Ang pinagagawa ng Diyos, mga nag nagrebelde, nag matitigas sa ulo, um umalis. But I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, the devil is going to do the same until today. But then, it's up to you. Hindi po, hindi po, nagpapabayaan Diyos sa kanyang sinasabi. So, thoroughness. Gawin ninyo ang pinagagawa ng Diyos at lubusang napakainam, napakaganda. As we will now pray, let us submit to God and let us continue doing God's work without delay. And I know God will be will be given the highest glory when we finish every work done to Him. Lord, I thank you because of the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of everything. I want you to let me finish well in life. The end of a thing is what matters most. 
and I'm depending on you for a good finishing. It doesn't matter how I have started, Lord, but help me to finish well. Anything I start today or that I have started that is yet to be completed, help me to complete it well. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. So brothers and sisters, again, it's time to say goodbye and uh, have a good evening to all of you. And please, again, watch our uh, replay and share this to your friends, okay? And uh, again, we have to complete well, okay? So marami marami salamat. And I pray that all of you are going to be blessed by the Lord from the crown of your heads to the tip of your toes. Again, this is Sister Taichi Rodriguez of the Lord's Flock. Marami marami po salamat. Till we see each other again, God willing, next Wednesday. Bye and keep growing. Thank you for joining us. We are the Lord's Flock Catholic Charismatic Community. You are welcome to join us to find the true life that God has destined for us to pursue. We are a place for all, to the married, solo parents, singles, young professionals, youth or the new generation and small world, we have small groups for you. To know more, visit our website flashed on the screen. If you missed our live teachings, they are available for replay on our website and our social media accounts. And if you are blessed and want to bless someone else, you may send your donations and prayer requests on our website. The life that God has given us is bountiful. Discover a blessed and fruitful life in God with us. To know more about us, check our website and socials or visit us at our center at number 5 Catanduanes Street, Quezon City. Thank you and hope to see you soon with us.